Hello everyone, this is Humam and welcome to Startup Zone Talk episode 3. So we have an excellent show today. Let's start it after the intro. Welcome back guys. So today we have very special guest. We have Derek Pong. So earlier uh, Patrick and I interviewed Derek Pong from Big It and he told us his story on how he built his $1 million event company. So before we started with the interview, I will go quickly through the news of this week. So the first news is about the Chinese spacecraft which which landed on the far side of the moon. Uh, we talked about it last week, but in this week, what we're going to talk about that it sent its first video footage, uh, which showed the landing and also uh, when it was flying uh, above the. The dark, uh, the far side of the moon. The correct name is actually the far side, not the dark side, because both sides of the moon get sunlight, but uh, that side we don't see it. So that's why it, the, the correct name is the far side of the moon. Uh, let's check the videos together. I think it's really amazing. I when I saw it, I I was like, wow. It's really amazing. The other news is uh, actually the Indonesian authorities are planning on uh, regulating the ride hailing rates for Grab and Gojek. So this is going to threaten their business model, I mean for Grab and Gojek. But the reason why the authorities is doing that is because of the price war between the, these two companies. So they are competing really hard and that's affecting the drivers. So the drivers are not happy. Uh, even competition is good for consumers, but when it's involving uh, a third party which is providing the service like the drivers here, so they should also consider the drivers. They should not only focus and on the competition and forget about the benefit of the drivers. So I think the solution here is uh, talking to the authorities and talking among each other and come up with a balanced uh, pricing which is still profitable for the drivers and it's uh, still good deal for the consumers so that way everybody is happy the third news is about Jeff Bezos so Jeff Bezos is going to divorce with, with his wife they have been married for 25 years uh, some some people thinking uh, if this divorce happen and they split the asset how it's going to affect amazon company first thing jeff bezos will not be the richest man in the world second thing uh, this need to be handled very carefully so it does not uh, create uh, some sort of uh, chaos in the stock market and let's say someone let's say if she decided to dump the shares and sell them and cash out or if he need to pay her in cash and he sell a big amount of shares at one go so this kind of thing usually uh, i think it will be settled outside the court they will not go to the court uh, and it should be handled very care carefully so that's all for the news today and now let's uh, go to the interview uh, with Derek Pong I think it's very interesting interview he talked about his story about his childhood how he was in school uh, he gave some tips at the end the, the end part is very important he gave some tips to 
to entrepreneurs and how he ha- how he manages his company and how he handles his stuff and clients. So I hope you watch it. It's a quite long interview, but I hope you watch it until the end. And before we go to the interview, please don't forget to subscribe. If, if this bringing be- value for you, please subscribe and like our pages. And let's go and watch the interview together. Hello everyone, uh, today uh, we have very special guest. We have Derek from Bigay. So, Hi. how are you Derek? How Not too bad. bad. Not too bad. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah. Hi yeah. Derek. Thanks. Thanks a lot for coming and joining us. Uh, <laughs> you're the first guest to be doing the talk, so yeah. I really appreciate that uh, you volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So Derek, maybe you can tell us uh, uh, a bit about your background, like where did you grow up, what type of kid, let's say, you were in school, mm. um, were you an A grade student or, or how? Tell us a bit about your background. <clears throat> well, here's uh, the quite irony, you know, when people say, when people think about uh, me as, as being a CEO or, or being a a, a entrepreneur as being a boss, sort of stuff like that. Some guys are thinking they might be thinking that I'm I'm good in my studies and stuff like that. Well, can say I'm good in my studies, but can say I'm not good in my studies. Here's some fun facts. I mean, okay. It could be a fact, I don't know. Am I a good boy in high school? Um, if my principal is looking at me, I'm so sorry. I'm not, obviously. And um, Am I good in studying in my high school? Pretty bad, pretty bad, uh, but I get it passed. And uh, am I, am I, why am I also a good in students? Uh, why am I also good in studies as well? Reason why is because, quite irony is because in high school I'm so bad, I'm, just, I'm very not good in studying, and I'm also quite, uh, not, they call it the four devils, I'm, I'm mm. named as one of them. Okay. I mean, one of the four levels actually. And uh, in high school, in uni, when I got to study psychology and uh, industrial psychology and counseling, which is a double major, apparently I graduated with uh, first honor 3.89 CGPA. So that causes itself triggers something to me, but it's not waking me up yet, but it triggers me that actually studying about human brain, human mind is my passion. I love to understand how human mind works in everything. So I think many entrepreneurs and many creative people pointed the same thing and think I find this is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so is it like the change like in your performance, tot- in, totally in your performance from being in high school or school to university? Do you think it's go back to the passion? It does really goes back to the passion because no doubt in my, in my high school time, I had to expose myself to study about um, physics, chemistry, especially the long, oh my goodness, mm. chemistry table, mm. periodic table. See, I almost forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I can't remember anything. <laughs> I don't care, remember helium is like this, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so it's the subject that whether or not trigger your your passion or not because in high school I'm not really keen at all and the only one subject I'm keen which is obviously uh, the easiest to pass is the, the English literature and everything and then when it comes to uni um, I suppose to all this kind of degree and it's easy and if anyone knows me from my university they know that one week before the exam I don't study I keep asking them are you free are you going to tell your Subject. If you're gonna fail a subject, come hang out with me tonight. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Because I usually finish my studies two weeks before the exam. Okay. And uh, I, I don't get. I uh, trust me. When it comes to Malaysia, getting tips for exam is the thing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody they, crazy about. They were crazy they, over it. Yeah. Asking the teacher, asking the lecturer yes. about it. I'm the rebellious one, so I don't go for it. And uh, I just study by the book. Everything, just the whole book, finish. I treat it like a storybook, mm. and uh, my friend don't understand how can I study, how do I study, mm. and uh, it's all about interest. When you interest about something, mm. you dwell into it, you go into it. Because I think your target is not the marks, but 
the knowledge you want yeah. to gain the knowledge you want I, I don't I, I wasn't I wasn't really into looking into getting high score at that time and I, I didn't know I I can get a high CGPA and honestly until my second uh, second year I only got to know about the CGPA okay. I thought it's a pass and fail kind of thing yeah. so let, let's go to begin mm -hmm. so what was like the defining a moment where you decided I'm going to start big at this event uh, organization. <clears throat> so what's the story of big? Okay, uh, the original of big started in 2013, uh, where we actually the big was previously known as Big Data World Show, um, and that's the first flagship event that we'll be doing. And so from there, the I'm the only one who campaigned it and I'm the only one who produced it means getting speakers in and I'm the only one who, who actually market it so start off from me myself actually doing it at first Singapore has been starting quite a long time then Malaysia has been quite late like two to three years late for this kind of events so I was thinking why don't we just do it in Malaysia take a risk let's try so from there not too bad it goes up, we have about 200 something. Then from 2013, 2013 fast forward to 2016. 2016 is our highest one. From Big Data Workshop, we changed our name to Big IT. From Big IT to Big It. Okay. So, because it sounds much more different from others. So, from there, 2016, we reached our highest peak. And where my mentor, or uh, the previous founder of the uh, company that I was in um, decided to pursue his study into data science. He wanted to become himself a data scientist or something related to it. So this, this event make him interested in data science? And something like that, yes. Okay. So he, he kind of said that, um, he asked me his proper question to me and said that, do you want to continue this business or you just want to do something else because he wanted to pursue study because he's not going to be around. So I took the risk and it was a joke at first. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't you sell this brand to me? Why don't you sell this company to me? Or something like that. Then he said, hey, that's a good idea. Why not? So for my three years to four years of saving um, from throughout my career of three to four years uh, with this industry of event organizer industry, Technically speaking, the, the saving that I have, I'm returning back to me. They have purchased it to me. It's not little. <laughs> so, so from you took that risk and you purchased the company, so you are running it. Yeah, all, purchased all one of the company and then okay. I took over mm -hmm. the uh, biggest brand. Uh, that means this, the, the, the colleagues, this is one of them. So me and the, other, the founder, we actually create uh, a brand of beauty of this one in the end. So the opportunity that this can develop is something that is has exposure here and it's really a, also a requirement. Yeah. 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 So, so how do you see like over the time when you produce that or have produced it until the time you took over and now it's 2019 already five years later, how do you see this exhibition or exhibitions in general in Malaysia developed also the conferences because you you do you always did like a conference together with the exhibition, right? Yeah. How how did that develop uh, over that time? Do you see anything that changed, or also from the from the audience that attended the requirements they had? Uh, any, any significant changes? Huge change, and I'm quite proud to see that back in 2013, I remember. Uh, because I save each one of the email, I never clear my email, incoming email. So there's one same person who once, uh, he was just a analysis, his job is at an executive level. And within that time span of five to six years, when I see his name appear again, it's quite remarkable that he's now currently the director. Or, and some of them are currently running his own office, uh, running his own company. Uh, some of them change job, no doubt they change job, but they change to a better role. And um, and the, some of them actually um, remarkable enough is when it comes to exhibition wise. There 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 are 
handful of people actually exposed to Malaysian market. They, they didn't expect that Malaysian market got this welcoming. Mm. So we just give another footprint. And from there, they start off their office, start off their... Uh, let's put it this way. I recall back in 2014, there's one particular company that runs a, a very basic uh, OS of Big Data. And uh, I first pitched the founder. And when I pitched the founder, I told him this. Southeast Asia market is as big as Europe. If you have the guts to look into it, that's my first pitch. Kind of the, the sentence is something I did. So he buy my uh, sentence and buy my words, and he's coming. He first invested into Singapore. Okay, not too bad. Then after that, he looked into, I convinced him to look into Malaysia. And he's quite happy. And the next year, I got a call from him say that he wants to invest into two before we even roll out the dates and also the agenda. So from there, we've been working together for quite a long time. Like almost every year, I can see them sponsoring these particular events. Um, until I think they achieved their, their highest point that they are listed in the New York Stock Exchange. They've been becoming a billion dollar worth company. This is something we may contribute or may not contribute. But as me myself, I do not want to name whether we claim we contribute. But as long as the person grow from a startup to a big corporation that listed in the stock exchange, why not? It's something like why not? And we start to see also the second point about exhibitors. We can determine the exhibitors whether or not they really, really help to grow the company because some exhibitors they they run the account, they help their boss to exhibit because the job asks them to do so. We can see that. But some big corporations they have a very strong enthusiasm from the boss and everything. So they will just go out somewhere to the extent walk to the main entrance of the conference to help the boss from one end. We have a couple of time uh, two years uh, event, one of the years in the year 2013 and 2016. They actually steal the deals on the spot. Which is during the exhibition. During the exhibition, which is quite um, it's a mileage for us that we reach there. So I think that's like what uh, measure the success of an event like when when like your clients manage to a network with people who are relevant who and then they close eventually a deal with them correct yes that's something that we we really want to see at the end of the day because that's what the purpose of the exhibition you create a marketplace you create a platform a business platform for people to actually come and actually grow their business because why we are believing in this? Because if we want to help startups so much, we can be the traditional way of uh, running a startup. That means we're getting the investor, becoming investor, or becoming the middle person to get investor, invest to it. No doubt, investor is one of the most important thing. But what if you get investors, but your company is not making money? That's a huge issue. Yeah, and, and I think many startups fall into this issue yes. like they they not making money they keep looking for another round of investment another round of investment and so on and they call themselves like a pre-profit pre-profit uh, yes yeah instead of focusing on sales on focusing on on the the profit and, and then instead of you chasing investor the investors will come and chase you when the investor are coming after you mm -hmm. because of your product believe me i have a friend that the investors are pouring in themselves for him. He set the bar higher and with a very small stake given to them. So the mindset of a startup, we have to put it in line. I mean, I seen a lot of exhibitors that they are there because they're trying to use up the exhibitor, the, the startup investors' money. But some of them actually without any investment, without anything, just came in and said that this is the much money I have. So can you help me with it? Which is the best project? Uh, actually, I, I, in 2017, I participated in yes. your uh, exhibition and I did that. 
Yes. I, I told them I'm very small company, and this is like the budget I have, and you guys like were Customized. generous and gave me something within my budget, and I think it was a win-win. Situation. Win-win situation. Yeah. That's what we always look into. Win-win situations, because um, we need to make sure the startup startup is new future, because we had to even. Not everybody can become Steve Jobs. Steve yeah. Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg is fortunate and brilliant genius guy. Okay, if you try to become them, you are lying to yourself. Mm. I'm honestly speaking. Um, I'm still my friend selling chicken rice. I see my friends uh, start up, so-called start up, selling chicken rice or selling ramen burger by the roadside. Mm. I guarantee you, they earn more money than those who work with. With the big corporations because they really know what they want to do. They can grow more money and that's what we call startup. Mm. They're earning clean profit because they are making money themselves and they can keep it and can grow and grow again. And one example is I witness my friend is that he loves seafood so much. He loves seafood, everything about the fresh seafood. And the problem here is that um, he quality find a fresh seafood in the city center. So he wants to start his own, so he create and create and grow and now he has, he just started his first physical store um, in a one year time span, he, he grow like seven branches mm. and three investors and got invited to by one of the so-called big guys to open his stores in a city mm. center. So this is passion. Passion grows something, yeah. Um, do you want to ask him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to follow up on, on the question I asked. Um, yeah. yeah, we moved a little bit to the like, okay, fish, fish startups. It's also okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite, um, it's quite a fantastic idea and uh, development to hear that. Um, when you look at the, when we go back to the exhibition and conferences, um, we figured out, especially last year, that there were really a lot of uh, exhibitions and conferences ongoing, uh, like in your area, big data, AI, uh, but then also there's a lot of industry 4.0 um, conferences and exhibitions, smart whatever city and smart this and smart that, IoT. And sometimes like there was such, I felt as, as such a huge overload. There were like two or three exhibition or conferences at the same day or same week. Yeah. Um, do you feel like there's a lot of competition uh, or a competition in the same level uh, as your conference and exhibitions? And you, do you feel there's an overload, or do you feel there's even more too space crowded. Uh, to crowd it, or this space for even more to come? For me, this kind of uh, environment that I'm experiencing, I'm very happy because you see, no doubt, there's a lot of conference, there's a lot of competition. Anything you do. Definitely, there's a lot of competition. If there is a demand, then of course. There is a competition. I'm okay, I'm quite happy, and I'm really most welcome for, the, for competition. If I'm doing something, if what am I doing, and there is no competition, I am doing something wrong. Mm. Okay. Oh, uh, also, it will become a kind of boring because like, you're not competing, it's not challenging. It's like not. talking to your own hand. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm talking to another hand, I'm talking to another hand. So, it's talking to your own hand. So, when I have a competition, I will have more interaction. And to, to answer you, how do I feel about the rest of the other competition, uh, competitors uh, running their own conference on similar topic as Smart City? You see, our conference content, how I see it this way, my conference content, I can only cover the most is 20 topics per conference, okay? And the most I can fit in, the most I can fit in is up to 50, okay? But there are not enough space for the rest of them. So the rest of them also need a pool of uh, yeah. business as well. So they will want to do that part of business as well. So they are helping us to fill it in, fill in what we can do. So it's okay, see? But the only thing that I cannot accept is the difference between competition competitors is that one is going after 
maximum profit. Okay, one is going after maximum profit, another we're going after successful achievement. As in, it could be a bad thing, could be a good thing, I'm not sure after that. Okay, so the one who going after maximum profit, that's one case study that I always recognize. The one who go after maximum profit is the one that I will try to not um, see as a competitor. Because whoever is a maximum profit competitor, they will try to copy as much as they can on, on anyone who they see is potential to be a better one. For instance, I have company, some company that actually copy exactly the same content uh, of uh, package or products that I offer. Exactly the same thing. It's just a photo stage, change the big color, and just give it to people. Speaking speaking of this, well, the copycats and people who copy their competitors for you in the beginning, like how much you will look at your competitors? Because sometimes it's good to look at the competitors, uh, be inspired, see how's the market doing, what what is their idea. But how much time you spend there? How much time you spend looking what on what they doing compared staying original or true to your own vision? How much time I spend on it? I literally just look at about ten minutes and then move on. So like ten percent of your time? <laughs> just look at this. Wow. For for me, if they start copycat, it's just like. When people start to copycat about our work, mm. our original work, yeah. I'm proud. Me I'm means proud. you are doing it's something right, worth, right? Yeah. worth it. Yeah. Um, but the only thing is, would the copycat will bring you down? Potentially, yes, it will. But if you ask me why I spend like 10 minutes of my time to look into it, okay, if I see they copying the exact same thing that what I have, mm. next, um, we have called this the standard uh, of procedure is go back to the drive board, mm. revamp your yeah. whole product yeah, and get better and, and get better. do something. So and, yeah. my if if I come across this another one, just change yourself. Mm. And I think people can't tell the difference between who's original and who's copying. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Means they have to promote our idea. Who is okay as well? Yeah. 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 And okay, you have maybe a history also, right? So people know which one is the legit and which one is the copycat. And usually, well, you have the experience, right? Because you have done it a couple of times before. So yeah. the service you're providing uh, is far higher than like, just trying to, I mean, to copy just an agenda that does not make a good conference or exhibition yeah. yet. There's a lot more in, that goes into the product. Maybe you tell us what's the future for Bigit? Future for Bigit? Mm. Uh, Is there any <coughs> new plans, any new technologies you'd like to <laughs> bring? Okay, so the near mm. future, there's a expecting about one or two years from now, or maybe I think longer time, maybe three years. Um, we will try to create and uh, emphasize on the thing we are run, rolling up what we call the uh, Biggie Campus. Biggie. Biggie Campus. And uh, we won't call it big, uh, Academy or anything, we call it Campus for a reason because we need the support um, from all the attendees who have previously joined us to continue, continuously support us. Because the Biggie Campus it's going to be a project and the ideas that whereby we are trying to create a, a environment for all the working adults out there in first of all in Malaysia. Hopefully we can grow bigger than that. The concept is we all know that um, not most of the people who graduate from universities, he or she may or may not follow the same path as what their degree detects yeah. them see but they will have to change eventually so right now we're going to focus on data science edge computing and IT and AI and VR first so we're trying to create a campus that supports all these uh, ideas and, and whoever wants to sign up these courses and it's going to be a night classes but so far we have come across night classes um, they tend to be not really keen to join night classes because 
um, it's you have to deal with it after that. That means you have to go somewhere else, to deal with your own daily life, like um, some getting some food and stuff like that. So the idea of bigger campus is you just drive for yourself there, get yourself there, food and everything, whatever you want is there. Hopefully we also hope we can also create a grocery corner. Mm. After the class, hey, I can just get some yeah, mm, shop stuff, shopping and then go back. So it's like making education fun. How about online? Let's say making online courses. Do you think Malaysians like this way or they still prefer to see someone face to face? For this kind of case, um, we still think that the the guidance of uh, human touch is still needed, regardless whether they're from Malaysia or from different countries. Because um, the online ones, um, unless you have the live webinar, then it's okay. I'm more than happy to see that. But most of the online courses are recorded videos. You can't ask the question for recorded yeah. videos. And every human being, nobody is genius, nobody is non, not so genius. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different approach to learn things. Just like if you really want to bring you back. Um, in my high school, I'm a bad student, so a very horrible, bad grade is. But yeah, I mean, university, I'm top notch. See, I'm the top 3% of my class. So, to answer your questions, yes, we're doing our part for um, offline workshop. Those online workshops, we leave it to the experts like Coursera, Udemy to do their part. Yeah. I saw uh, recently when you just talked about the online, uh, that there's also online uh, conferences now. Yes. Uh, and even online uh, exhibitions like um, uh, virtual reality or augmented reality conferences yeah. and exhibitions. Like, okay, it's uh, not pre-recorded, so it's kind of live, live but yeah. it's placed at, uh, somewhere. Uh, you can attend physically, but most of the people, like global, on a global basis, would like attend uh, yeah. online and then can also go in like chat rooms, like to network or so ask their daddy questions. Uh, is this something, what, what, what's your take on this? And is this something you can imagine doing or offering in addition, um, in addition maybe yeah. to what you have currently? I'm more than happy to learn how they do it because I've been trying to look for sources for the kind of thing. If anyone who can do some AR thing with me, please come to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's Maybe we can help you with that. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, honestly speaking, augmented reality, all this kind of stuff, they are, they are the next big thing. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. It, it makes you telepath. In other words, it, it helps you to telepath from one place to another place. Because the, one of the top 10 objections for not attending uh, our our events is they can't make it. Time is not time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to give them the convenience that they can just access to their phones, plug it in, everything. I think it's going to be a future thing for conference and exhibition in the near future. Why so? Because if you guys look into properties right now, yeah. they're using AR to they for they people stop. to experience and walk through all mm -hmm. properties uh, better than the traditional just looking through the photos. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are we are really keen to look into so, that. So you see it the Malaysian training or even is going into that direction? In a very potentially yes, very potentially yes. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick question, maybe give me a quick answer. Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> what is like one of the things during your business journey like you regret so much? Like something like you haven't done or you've done and you regret? What are the greatest regret? Yeah, like the greatest regret. Do you have any? Maybe you don't. My own greatest regret is when I'm uh, take, take some time. It's quite, yeah. It's not to say much of this show much gratitude to my uh, mentor enough. I feel that my greatest regret is my mentor. I didn't say much. I didn't show much of gratitude to him because 
opinion. I couldn't appreciate his advice. I time. appreciate, but uh, I don't show much. I think I don't show much comparing to my how how others show their bosses and everything. Because young, when I was, when we were very young that time, we keep thinking that why our boss are so mean, mm. treat us like nobody in business, and you know, like mm. like we are the tool for them. But after I resigned. And uh, after I I gone through a different environment like until now, I start to look back again and say, I'm doing the same thing what he did last time. Yeah. So I should say thank you to him. But I can't reach out to uh, him anymore because uh, I don't know where is he transferred to. <laughs> okay, so so you lost the connection. Yeah. But then another question in Big it, what is the work culture like? How you make your staff happy? How do I make your staff happy? Yeah. Let them be what they want to be. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because um, if you want to know how big is our office environment, mm-hmm. um, we work in an open space environment. Okay. They can just, they don't need to knock the door and walk in and look at look for me. Um, I can hear what they're talking, I hear stuff, and um, they play whatever music on the YouTube. I, 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 all day long we have a music playing everything and so that they can have the feeling of um, at home and stuff like that and um, um, in the, we also have some toys at, uh, at the office sometimes dogs are, want to live back like the kids <laughs> and the um, office environment trying to create as much as we can to create like a, a home for them like a home for them so, so the environment is like a family environment like a friendly environment more like casual. a university campus you mm. know like you go to your friend's house yeah. and you study we're trying to create this kind of environment and in the same time stay productive uh, stay productive uh, yeah they do their part they, because yeah. i know this is the difference from that when we're doing this they open up more because most of the staff problem is that they do not dare to ask the question mm. they have problem they will keep to themselves because they're afraid to make a mistake see when they make a mistake they want to keep to themselves at the end of the day they will be playing. But if they don't keep it themselves, they tell, they voice out, things can be solved. So we encourage them, whatever problem you come across, speak it out mm-hmm. to the whole floor. Anyone will take out and help you solve the problem. Mm-hmm. That's how we keep the stuff happy. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Do, do you have a question? Another question. So mm-hmm. came from my side, I think, uh, okay. coming, coming near to, uh, to the, end the, end. End. the time that we uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Maybe so one perfect. more question. Uh, Last question, since I asked yeah. you about the stuff, maybe I actually ask you about the clients. So also, same question, how you make them happy? Be honest. Or how is your relationship? We will be honest. And uh, to, to add to the extent of as much as we can, and uh, we will be firm to on our own personality, not be firm on our decisions that you must follow by, you know. Firm to be who we are. And be flexible. Be negotiable on whatever we are doing. I mean, if you you can only do that, so fine. We will do that to wherever you guys want to be. To make our client happy, for instance, most of the average companies have this amount of budget to participate in our event. So we have to come to the midpoint that it makes us to operate, allows us to operate the fee. And also at the same time, they're happy with the price. So we come to the midpoint, everybody is happy. That's the price point, happiness. Second thing is, we're trying to understand what makes them happy. Simple by asking around um, them, say, what do you want to see during the event? And some of them say, oh, I want to see AR gaming or stuff. And then we bring it then mm-hmm. you want to still like the photo booth for other kind of Yes, they like it, they will bring it then. So listening is playing very important and uh, being very honest, be firm to who you are, don't try to be somebody else, maybe someone, and uh, always be flexible when you can. Maybe I have a story of my own, Yeah. Uh, because I, I participated in Big 2017, and that time I had an issue with the security guard, <laughs> because they climbed my car, and, and you immediately come, <laughs> yeah, he came and sorted out, even he paid the fine, and Derek paid the fine to, uh, the parking because I didn't know that's not the designated place mm-hmm. parking and 
from that time we I, like I got to know him and we become friends. <laughs> yes, we are. That's very nice. <laughs> but one final question we can ask me is we're doing this for the startup. So yeah. uh, you give some hint earlier already, which are quite nice. But uh, maybe if you can address to the uh, entrepreneurs, the young entrepreneurs and startups, uh, what is your your tips or your top one tip to them when they start up um, a new company? How to be successful? Or how to become successful? Okay, where this this one sentence I say to all my staff <laughs> and to all my colleague and my colleague now is kind of like the entrepreneurs in my office. Um, it's pretty much very simple. Whatever is your passion, monetize it. Make money from your passion. If you love swimming, make money from swimming by being a coach and charge people for that. If you love cooking, create a recipe book. They really, everybody likes it. If you love uh, talking to people, join my company then. <laughs> <laughs> monetize your passion. Yes, okay. monetize okay. your passion because other than that, you, you are spending eight hours mm. plus lunch time in your office. That is like almost close to 30% of your lifespan. I think more than that. More than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more than that. In your, in your life, of course, it's spent on your passion. If you don't care what people say, yeah. if people say swimming is for, it's gonna turn your skin dark and everything, doesn't care. <laughs> Just go swim. And uh, I can give you one good example is because my youngest brother, he's a swimming coach. Um, he makes six to seven thousand ringgit per month. And he's the only one who teach, mm. and he makes money. He yeah. loves to swim. Mm. He just make a lot of money from that. Mm. And now he he is he's, this is one of his passion. He's another passion. He's building a PC from scratch and everything. I'm fine. Let him do it. Mm. Usually, I tell people when they ask me like uh, how to find their passion I, or when you know you are following your passion, I tell them you should not have a hobby. Yeah. Because people have a hobby when they doing something they don't like. That let's say a doctor, but he don't like the job. So maybe his hobby is riding bike or or let's say open a mechanic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you should go to that direction. Then you don't have a job and you don't have a hobby because you are doing what you love. Yeah. Okay. Last question. We will end up with this. How can people reach out to you? Um, okay, they can reach out me in. Any social media, okay. okay. Um, the best to reach out to me is to the company uh, Instagram, which is Biggie HQ, or to the Facebook Biggie HQ. Why to that? Because I myself also going through that as well. If you want to look for Jerry Ball, just reach out to me from there. I'll go through my LinkedIn as well. Same thing. Just look up for my uh, name, and then you can see me. The only one, the one, the few person who have Jerry Ball. That's me. <laughs> we will put the links yeah. down below. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's the only way you can. Um, that's that's the best way to reach out. If you're going through my phone and everything, I'm so sorry. I don't pick out if anyone I never recognized before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Thank okay, you. Cool. Thank you very much for joining us today. No problem. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay. Sure. Appreciate that. And, sure. Uh, we hope to see you again in sure. another episode. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.